Hey everyone, sorry I haven't made a video in such a long time, um, but I believe I got some other pressing things in my life completed, and um, just as a quick announcement, um, I finally got my computer certification, uh, it's a Comp TIA A plus certification, um, that was something that uh, uh, the Lord's been asking me to get that certification for almost 10 years now. And uh, finally uh, hunkered down, uh, studied for it, and took the test. Tests is actually two tests. And um, passed it, and I'm officially certified. So I uh, just wanted to share that and, um, you know, just be... Uh, uh, just be praying for me since there's other certifications that the Lord uh, wants me to to get. Um, and I just speak right now that the only people that are allowed to pray for me are those with, number one, good intentions. Number two, that are Christians that believe the Word of God, that it's the infallible Word of God, that it is 100% accurate and correct I bind all witches and Satanists and anybody of evil intent and evil doing from from praying for for me uh, you know don't make any voodoo dolls don't do anything silly the only person that I that I'm allowing to pray for me are those that are praying to the Lord God Jehovah, whose Son is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of my life and Holy Spirit. It leads and guides us. He is our helper that was sent uh, when Jesus uh, ascended. The Holy Spirit came to help us. Um, there was a word that the Lord wanted me to release and I needed to kind of sit on it for a little while because um, I needed just to make sure that it was um, good, biblical, clean. Because you know what? There's, uh, there's spiritual battles out there and I have to make sure that what I'm hearing in my spirit is from the Lord and not from my flesh or not from from demons because the you know demons can give you words that may sound holy it may sound biblical or prophetic or um but you really have to sometimes pause and analyze um things you get to make sure that they line up number one with the word of god that's like your, your that's your first and easiest filter if there's something that contradicts the word of god um you can probably discard that word um i will say that if you get like revelations from the lord like visions or dreams that specifically you know uh, if you have a dream about i don't know um a spaceship to the moon and you find water there and that has a prophetic meaning however the lord reveals obviously those things you know it's not going to those exact that exact thing is not going to be in the word of god but you can't discount that because um you know the lord can give you visions and dreams that may look radical or way out there um but it's to edify the church in one one way or the other so a couple nights ago um i was uh just you know seeking the lord and the lord um started speaking to me and he's you know one of the things he told me is just to to, to record it on the phone like a voice voice recording and to my error i chose voice to text versus just voice recording voice recording you can you can basically record indefinitely as long as you got space on your phone 
they're fine. The voice text is a 10 minute limitation. And, um, you know, I should have just done the, the voice recording. Um, so what I, the word that I have, I believe the, the Lord gave me, um, two words and, you know, and I confess that I, I messed up and lost about five or six minutes of, I, of, of what I believe is the, um, uh, possibly a second word. It wasn't the interpretation of this vision, um, because um, the the uh, I'm gonna read to you essentially what the Lord told me, and um, as as you'll start to hear, um, it starts to explain itself. Um, I'll also add some of my uh, kind of own. Um, thoughts on it and a revelation that the Lord gave me um, so again this is something that the Lord doesn't want me to hold on to but he wants me to release and release uh, you know for now so I just want to and I'm just be reading off my phone and kind of have this split screen where I've got the recording and then I've got the my notes on the other side because um, I don't have too much of uh, too much table real estate here and I, <laughs> I don't have too much um, uh, that I can do uh, here in my house currently but I just want to pray um, for this and for you um, Lord God I just pray that we will have ears that listen Feet that obey, that go forth and obey your commands. I bind the Leviathan spirit that goes forth to bind and twist words. I bind that. I bind all witchcraft against this recording. And I just release angels to come forth at any uh, uh, person's home. To minister to them so that whatever part of this word strikes to them that they will just go forth and make action about this not just listen to it and say oh well that's nice and lord i pray god that you will talk to them you will help them lord to know what their part is what their piece of the puzzle in this in this uh, uh vision in this, um, uh, I call this a warning and an encouragement at the same time. <sighs> that they will not despair, but Lord, they will be encouraged and strengthened. And be a warrior and just stomp on an enemy's head. In Jesus' name, amen. So, he was talking to me essentially well what what first he showed me was basically a map of the United States of America and basically look if you look at the the outline of the United States of America basically and what it was was that it was completely like jet black it was just black there's just complete darkness over it um basically there's a a great deep darkness on the USA and what the Lord was saying is that this great deep darkness on the USA will happen if the church fails to cover the earth with his light and his comfort now I want to pause here and I want to I want to make um, uh, clear that with anything prophetic and this is stuff that I'm, I'm teaching you. Again, I'm not an expert. This is stuff that as I'm learning, I want to be able to encourage and teach others. Um, so this is teachings I've gotten and it's been repeated over and over again by multiple prophets. Um, and I know you've heard this before and it's not supposed to be a cop-out, but I believe it's supposed to be just 
many church members, the body of Christ, basically building the full picture. And I think of like a puzzle. And I just have maybe a piece or maybe I have a quarter of the picture and someone else has the other quarter or maybe I have half a picture. Um, but basically that, you know, you know, uh, we prophesy in part. So I feel strongly to say, to say that what, what I'm going to be talking about is that it's not just that what, that what the Lord gave me is the antidote of like, okay, if we do X, Y is going to happen. Um, because there's there's a lot of things that the the body of Christ needs to be doing. Um, number one, individually, for themselves, uh, basically um, uh, judging themselves. And when I say judging, it's not this um, condemnation judging. It's a bit like judging your heart. It's uh, it's going to the Lord as as uh, as I believe David said in the Psalms, like Lord, like scan my heart. Is there anything wicked in me? Um, you know, because um, a lot of us are praying for revival and change, but unless we're molded to be what the Lord wants us to be as the individual, um, we won't be able to be used to the fullest. I didn't say that the Lord can't use us at all. But not to the capacity he wants to use us. I hope you understand that. Um, so, like I said, just I don't want to get into this long teaching on this, but just to highlight the fact that this is what I believe like one puzzle piece of many that needs to happen to prevent this darkness. Now, I want to state right now that I do not believe that the end times as in like the rapture is going to be happening soon um, no I am not predicting a timeline of when the Lord's going to come back because the Bible's clear then that even Jesus knows only the Father knows um, but I believe with my whole heart that there needs to be a, a, a third great awakening and revival before that happens. I really believe so. And what I really believe is what the Lord has spoken to many, many respected, trusted biblical leaders, that there is a one billion soul harvest coming and it started. So, until those one billion people come in, you know, I don't believe uh, Jesus will come back, uh, like, within that. That's, those are my thoughts. I'm a, that's not revelation. That's what I, what I really feel in my spirit. Okay, so I don't want you to call me heretic or anything like that. It's what I really sense... Um, what I have peace about it and what I'm agreeing with others about. So again, with that said, again, the Lord wants his church to cover the United States with his light and his comfort. Um, you can kind of see like why his light to push away the darkness. Why his comfort? Um, the Lord was uh, basically just uh, in, in like in sensing and feeling and and like what I felt was that with the comfort was there's a lot of people in despair, both those in the church and out of the church. There's a lot of people, and I and I'm I'm seeing this because um I I work, but I also work um I work in the marketplace. I work uh, amongst people um in the business. I work with uh, I believe eight other people at my job, and a lot of them have a lot of fears. A lot of them are have a lot of anxiety, uh, sleeping issues. You know, 
um, whenever these, uh, whenever the CDC and or the the WHO or 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 Biden and his administration um, talks about mask audiences and and uh, vaccine cards and forced vaccinations and all this stuff, and then saying that fully vaccinated people. Lord Jesus, help me. This I was not planning on saying any of this, but you know, just imagine like I like pull back for a sec and have just the love and compassion for the individual for just a second, and stop looking at a vaxxer versus an anti-vaxxer, because a lot of these labels I I just really have seen it's just demonic. I'm just gonna say that. Why? Because we start labeling people what these things, and we don't start looking at them as people that need to be redeemed. Um, people that, you know, um, need hope. Um, it may be a category of people, but it's, it's a lot of times when we start labeling people with this, like, uh, you know, whatever you, you mock the president which or mock the illegitimate president i'm just gonna say that um you know these things you have to look back and say like you know what like we got to be careful with our words and and if we're going to be the light of of the the light of god if we're supposed to be these ambassadors of christ this light that we're supposed to bring into the usa to push back the darkness you know we have to we have to take take stock of what we say we have to basically remove these labels that the media or the resistance is um putting on people because i i even see with people in my church that are indifferent they're for or not for vaccinations masks whatever it's it's not a it's not a it's not the elephant in the room anymore. It's affecting everybody and it's wearing people down. So it, it's time for the the like the beat around the bush to just 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 whack the bush and get it out of the way because these are topics we need to talk about. Okay, but you know when we talk about these things, it's like is there is there now a filter? Is there now a wall? that limits how much we love someone because they're against guns, they're for vaccinations, they voted for, for Biden, um, they think Biden was sent from the Lord and Trump was sent from, from Satan. And we, we, have to, we have to battle those things and be like, wait a second, where, do, where are those thoughts coming from? And am I speaking those things out? And is that affecting my relationship with that person? I, for one, have to be careful. I, for one, have to be... Um, uh, I, let me say this. I've got my own opinions. I, I believe that President Trump is the, uh, is the legitimate president still of the United States of America. As heaven sees it. What's manifested in the natural is not what was supposed to be God's will. Because there's evil men. There is um, the gift of um, free will. There is um, an antichrist spirit that's in the world that wants to push... Um, all the end time agenda stuff that you read in uh, in Revelation, and I think in Jude, and then in First or Second Peter. So I apologize. It's it's the the whole end time stuff is not just in Revelation. It's in multiple parts, and I believe also that like Daniel is also very prophetic as well. But you know, the Lord's basically saying that it's not time for any of that yet. Okay, not yet. And it's, it's the job of the church to push back and say, no, 
the Lord is giving the prophets um, uh, basically not the timeline, but basically saying, hey, the devil is trying to push his agenda and rush the timeline for the Antichrist to come. And Jesus is saying, it's not time for that. So, number one, he's already said that it's not going to happen. But the Lord also needs cooperation from his church, from his bride, that he's that he sacrificed himself on the cross as one of the benefits. We can't just look at sorrow with him on the cross or 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 you know, just be sad, you know. Um, there's so many aspects to Jesus dying on the cross that you have to accept. And you have to accept the whole package, not just little bits here and there. And one of the things that he bought and paid for with his blood was the authority. You know, and, and Jesus, Jesus says that like, you know, God has given me, given him everything, and then Jesus says, "I give, give you everything," and that includes authority. So, and and we look at Adam and Eve when he, when when God gave them the, the edicts, like, "Hey, go and subdue the earth. Go, go name those animals. Go populate the earth. You know, um, don't eat of that tree." You know, um, it's these are these were edicts, and this this was authority. And um, we need we need to we need to wake up, and we need to start using the authority that the Lord God, that Jesus, has already given you, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if Jesus Christ is of nazareth is your lord and savior you already have this authority now how much of this authority um it's kind of like uh, just a quick example what just so like i can talk about lengths here um you're not going to give a child a gun um you may give them a plastic bat and then when he gets older maybe a a 10 year old you give him a knife and then when he gets older teenager or adult depending on how mature they are then you can give him a weapon you know shotgun handgun um it, it and it's a matter of responsibility basically authority that um the lord reveals to you and allows you to enact on that authority is based on your maturity, your intimacy with the Lord. Um, and, but with this, no matter how much revelation or how much authority um, the Lord has revealed to you to use, because he can give you, he can give you authority as, a, as one single person to walk into, um, I don't know, uh, a country in Africa and say, I take this whole uh, uh state of um of let's say zimbabwe and i declare it that it is jesus jesus is lord that it is not the devils you know i'm not going to talk about this whole theology on where you have authority in those places but you know that's the level of authority that the lord can give you the lord can give you territory over a state or a city or a whole country or a whole continent um and you know those are things that you have to develop with intimacy with the lord those are things that you have to start learning about uh you know teachers uh, you, you can look up on youtube or wherever else and start learning or reading books about um you know trusted biblical leaders to talk about the authority um that that you have and how to use it because sometimes we have this this sword or this gun or this power and number one a lot of us don't even know that we have that 
Number two is how to use it. Number three, how to use it effectively and effectively. So um, there's just, just a couple of uh, seeds of thought to, to start pursuing, like what, who, who can I like start to read about, look about and just, and start practicing this authority so you can kick the devil in the butt. Um, so that's, that's part of the, um, uh, that picture. The Lord also went to say is many have fallen away, but many have been faithful. And with this faithful, a uh, few, I will excel them and I will empower them to go beyond their natural limitations. Hallelujah. For there will be many, says the Lord God Almighty, that will seek after me and the gifts and will not receive them, for they are not called, nor are they chosen, says the living God. Um, think about the example of, um, I believe it was in the book of uh, book of Acts where they were following uh, the apostles and they're saying like, hey, you've got this wonderful power. We want to buy it from you. Um, that's that's one aspect. That's that's more like a, a wizard or a, a, a witch or some type of witch doctor that's trying to buy this power that only the Lord can give. That's number one. The Lord's not going to do that. Number two. The Lord wants to give us all things. He wants to give us good gifts. And the gifts, uh, gift of healing, gift of prophecy, gift of, uh, uh, you know, you name it. But what I felt there is that people that don't have his heart and don't have what I would say not good at just good intentions, but heaven's intentions in mind. He's going to say, no, I'm not going to give that to you. You're going to squander it. So that's what I, that's what I felt that the interpretation of that is that they're going to, people are going to seek after him. And I believe these are going to be Christians. They're going to have well intentions and they're going to be like, why hasn't the Lord given me this? But sometimes there's that, little stain in the heart that's you know pride or, or greed or whatever and the lord's like hey i gotta clean that up first before i give you this so i believe this is a like no denied forever this is going to be like a no denied until you get your heart right so i want to i want you to understand that all right um for i will choose who will have these mighty gifts these mighty powers to subdue darkness, okay? And to rain hell on the kingdom of hell through music, through plays, through scribes, through music literature, through movies, through my word. Everything imaginable will be used to bring in the end time harvest, says the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Um, you know, this this is where we've got to really get, uh, get our hearts prepared, our hearts right. Um, because the Lord is not denying anybody from, or any, let, let, me, let me clarify that. The Lord is not denying any Christ follower, any person that's got God's heart to deny them anything there's things I've asked the Lord um and he didn't say no to what he started doing is started preparing my heart preparing the soil of my heart to receive this great thing that I've asked for so you know and that's after getting rid of the 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 minds the a poverty mindset where it's just like well you know Whatever I have is fine, and it's and the Lord's like, Lord, if 